capacity here in the Chicago Stadium. In fact, they may sell it out. The fans are still filing in, and here's the way the lineups will go for the contest this evening. The three basketeers, along with Nate McMillan, their point guard, and pivot man Alton Lister for Seattle, and Bernie Bickerstaff has done a terrific job with the Seattle team. You see, the record's not too good, but he darn near got them to the finals a year ago, though they finished under 500. Sellers in Oakley with Mike Brown in the pivot tonight, as Lister is not a high scorer. And our old pal Doug Collins is the coach of the Chicago team, and we're ready to go, and we sincerely hope you'll enjoy it. Danny Crawford, Hugh Evans are our officials. And here we go. And Seattle will have a chance to draw first blood. McDaniel heads up the floor. He had a good grip on Alton Lister. Ellis from McDaniel ties the game. Nice pass, nice shot. They rush it to the other end. McDaniel, boy, he needed that. McDaniel's first play gets it back. Ten on the shot clock. That's for three. Oh, we said he was struggling. Yes. There's Bernie Bickerstaff. Twelve years he spent it as an assistant coach in Washington. Worked under three different head coaches there. Jordan. Air Jordan. First time tonight. And Michael Jordan up the floor with play instruction. Dale Ellis has him now on a switch. Lister jumps out to play. Inside. Well, they give it to Oakley from 17 feet. Oh, hurry, but he missed. Rebound. Oakley fumbles it away. It's recovered by McMillan. Ahead to McDaniel for the dunk. 7.29 left first quarter. Chicago by one. Steve Jones, Skip Carey with you from the Chicago Stadium. From behind, there's Jordan. Watch this. He missed it. And a foul will be called on McDaniel, and that will be his. He goes second. to the line to shoot two. He's an 85% free throw shooter. He's averaging 4.1 steals, 7.9 assists, and right at 34 points a game. Well, that's, that says he's a pretty good player, huh? I would say so. Russ Shaney has checked into the game for McDaniel. Well, McDaniels has got the personal fouls, and so Shaney will come in, but they run a play for Ellis and got four. And it's a one-point Chicago lead. Chicago has the ball. Down low, Sellers from Jordan. Four for them. Shaney's jumper, yes. So he comes in. And he's four of five at the other end. Ellis against Sellers gets it right back. Need a calculator tonight, folks, the way this one has started. Paxson against McMillan on the wing. Brown up top. This is the end of a nine-day road trip for Seattle. Now, this is a bad matchup for Shaney. Jordan doesn't get inside. Brown the rebound, and he wisely clears it to Mr. Jordan. Paxson in three-point country. Uh-uh. And the rebound comes to Dale Two. Austin. Now you'll see Jordan make the same kind of play to Brad Sellers in the inside. And if you're going to shut that kind of play down, you've got to have good pressure on the passer so he doesn't have time to spotlight the cutter inside. Bernie Bickerstaff pretty loose. He, he doesn't know it's cold outside. His team's not playing that well. I think he and Hugh Evans lighting one another up across the way. Both teams 7 of 14 from the field sellers has fades away this is a the guy they got to get into the dance mcmillan has got to, i mean uh, mcdaniel has got seven chambers and yet to score he gets that jumper there and dale ellis has got ten in the period rory sparrow has a bad thumb horace grant a groin injury and both are doubtful for this game today once again they work it in so boy if ellis can do that all night and then get the jump shot going as well. He's going to have a pretty good night. Uh, Jordan thought he had a steal, made a gamble, and that left Ellis, a good post-up player, three, just dropped it in for two. Now Jordan wants to come back and go to work himself. He's been quiet in this first period of play. Jordan against the double team. The court scene intended for Summers. He didn't get to the pass. And a timeout called by Seattle and Bernie Bickerstaff. The offensive end. McMillan handles the ball a lot for the Seattle team. He's the guy whose job it is to make it happen. They're down to eight on the shot clock before he can unload. Well, they, up top. they were working solely for Dale Ellison and never did find him free, so now they're against the clock, and Polonese will pull the trigger. 
24 expires. It was partially blocked. We're in the two-minute period in quarter number one. Uh, Ellis is saying, don't stop me now. I got a chance to keep going. Nice, strong drive. And he drew a foul. Jordan picks up his first. And the fourth team foul, first to the two minutes. Jordan here. picks up the first, the first foul. But if you look at Ellis, who is an established scorer, and you see what his offensive game has done for him and his confidence, he is attacking the basket. Brad Sellers is not that kind of offensive player yet, but he's been attacking the basket. So both guys really beginning to explode in their games and do more things. Danny Young in for the Sonics. And Ellis seeks and gets his 14th point. <laughs> Pressure all over the floor for the Sonics. Well, I'm not sure if Polonese understands that uh, that is really a bull in that uniform, and they had word that that Oakley is more than a load. And if you're going to attack him, you better bring some friends. And your lunch is going to be an all-day job. Jordan. Corzine stumbling, recovers, and walks. Third turnover for Chicago. It makes some things happen. Danny Young crosses the line for Seattle. Young out of Wake Forest. A lot of ACC players in the NBA. Chambers gets it back, but Jordan steals it again, his second of the night. A rebound. Bears it to Young. They rush it down the floor to Chamber. Cross court. Good look to Ellis. Spin and walk. He tried to unload it on the way down, but didn't get rid of it in time. 102. Sedale three. Shaney fouled him. Two shots. Second on Shaney. McDaniel also has two. After getting off to a good start. Now Dale Ellis. He gets a rest. McKee pumps away and just does miss. Young, it'll count. What a tip. He threw up a prayer and had it answered. Danny Young at the buzzer, and I wonder how big a basket that will be, or if it will even be significant when we get to the end of this game. At the end of one, the Sonics lead Chicago 27-24 as you look at a heck of a tip. Match all evening long, and he found the wrong one. And it shows the quick hands and really the ability of Michael Jordan at the defensive end. He said, Tom, I told you the first time, don't try that. He steals the ball and heads the other way. And Jordan, who leads the NBA, and the one thing that he'll do is follow the ball and react very quickly. He makes Dale Ellis to make a change here as well, and that results in a turnover. Pippen, Sedale, three put the ball. Now down low, they go to Grant. Playing hurt, gets his own rebound. Sonics still enjoy a three-point lead. Now this is McDaniel's spot. He likes to get it on the box, turn around, jump shot, but a good play by Pippen. And Hanson leads a break to the other end. Corzine thought about it. Tom Pippen, that won't go. That won't go. McDaniel the rebound. So Pippen had an easy chance and couldn't buy it. Uh, one of the reasons that Chicago does a good job defensively is they're a pretty active team, and they chase the yeah, ball, they bring well. Michael Jordan back in the ball game. And Dale Ellis is about to check in for Seattle. Corzine passed up the jumper. Jordan jumps in, drew the foul, shoots two. Kevin Williams, is second. Williams picks up his second. Now there are about 18,000 people here Michael in attendance, Jordan. and they're all had a tough time at the line. They're just six of 11. But it comes on the rebound. Michael ahead it comes to Jordan. With a left hand, won't go, shoots two. The boy is more aggressive now as he goes to the hole. Lister's second foul. Well, you know, the great ones like to get the other players involved. And he said, I gave you guys a chance to go to work in that first period of play. And now I'll carry the load. Great ability right there. Missed a pass, you know, the player right there. But I think in Jordan's case, he's going to take some of those tough shots. He's going to make more. He has a head to pass. Maxson finds Scotty Pippen. It's taken away by Nate McMillan. Inadvertent whistle. Chicago ball. Inadvertent whistle. 
Chicago ball. Well, you see right here, Pippen makes a great hustle play after a bad one to come back to try to make the block. That got Bickerstaff off his feet. He said, look, I thought my man got fouled. Chambers just threw that one up in the air after he got the rebound, but it's the Bulls ball. Pippen stolen beautifully by McMillan. Good look. Two shots, McDaniel. And as we so often point out on these telecasts, all the number one draft choices are not <laughs> attired in basketball uniform. Beach against somebody. Uh, no idea who. McDaniel makes the first free throw. Six out of eight make it. Excuse me. McMillan. Up the floor. McDaniel, but jumping in. Horace Grant ahead to Sellers. He put it on the floor when he should not have, and Dale Ellis now has 16. What did that do? 32 31, Seattle again with 6.55 till halftime. Grant pulls up and gets the lead from Jordan. Grant's first points of the evening. Chambers. Chambers. Only his second basket. So we're on a seesaw now the Sonics by one 34 33 six and a half minutes till the break again they get a big man to switch out and they make the double team for has got an easy two Chicago reclaims the lead. Five on the shot clock. Miller got it inside. Yeah. Well, they'd like both of those guys to do a better job. They got a piece of that ball. Should have been a goal ten. When does a double team hurt? Well, when you have a player of the ability of Michael Jordan who has the ability to score and pass, and you come and you get there a little bit too late, that means somebody else is going to be available, and that allows Dave Corzine to get an easy hoop inside. Tom Chambers, just wave. Just wave at him. Thought maybe the breeze would throw him <laughs> off. There's one of our favorite people, the lovable mascot of the Chicago team, Benny the Bull. Rory Sparrow about to check in. And that leads to a turnover. Sonics. And there is Vincent Michael Jordan. He's got Ellis out in front. Dale Ellis. Dale has 18. Ellis, five on the timer. Shaney, tough shot. It was. They spent most of that 24-second shot looking for Ellis, and they couldn't find him, and Shaney buried a tough jumper against the defensive seller. Chicago has built a three-point lead. Bernie Bickerstaff wants to circle the wagons. 2.43 till halftime. We'll be back. Shaney with the inbounds pass. Now Rory Sparrow plays Nate McMillan. 235 left in the quarter. Chicago by three. Again, they're trying to free up Ellis, and it's taken a lot of time, so they have to find another option. Chambers will only take the second, but he can't get it up and down and a foul. I think on Chambers reaching in. Michael Jordan goes to the foul line. Jordan with nine. Now, Bernie Bickerstaff has been smiling quite a and bit, Jordan but I think we're going to see a hostile Bernie Bickerstaff. Pretty good week's work. <laughs> He's missed two at the foul line tonight. He's six out of eight. Rory Sparrow is called for the foul. It's not surprising that Sparrow would commit a foul, is it? <laughs> I apologize. You don't apologize. He couldn't buy it. Rebound is on the deck. Big pile. And a jump ball will be the result. At Seattle. The well, Seattle has had a one-play option, and that's to try to find Dell Ellis. And right now they do, but the defense is there. Oh, he's made a couple of tough shots. That's what he does game. best. He can shoot the ball, and the coaches have to beg him to do it a little bit more. Jordan will shoot, too. By the way, we look at the uh, front line of the future for the Chicago Bulls. Grant is in, along with Oakley and Brad Sellers. They're all young and active. And if Grant develops the way they'd like, he could be a player that could really create some problems for people in the middle. 
Jordan six is 12 point. It's eight and his team is up by six. Chambers throws it away. There's Horace Grant. Big second quarter for Chicago defensively. They really shut down the Seattle team. We're at halftime and Craig Sager standing by with other NBA news and highlights for you. 48-42 Chicago at the half. New Jersey Nets forward Orlando Woolridge has been suspended by the NBA after admitting that he had a drug problem. Woolridge has entered a drug rehabilitation program at Van Nuys, California. He dropped from sight over the weekend, missing games on Friday and Saturday nights. He originally claimed to have been in a car accident. However, on suspicions from the league office, he was summoned to New York for a meeting where he disclosed his drug problem. This is Woolridge's first violation of the NBA drug policy, which allows a player to voluntarily step forward. He's suspended with full pay, and inpatient treatment is provided by the league. If a player comes forward a second time, the policy is the same, except he does not receive his salary. A third strike, and he's out banned by the NBA for at least two years. The only player to fall into that category is now his former teammate, Michael Ray Richardson. Richardson is now a player in the CBA. His two years are up on Thursday. He plans to apply for reinstatement. The NBA's drug policy is one that's firm but fair. One other professional leagues would be sound in adopting. The NBA's Player of the Week, now in his fourth season. Stockton has yet to miss a game, but this is his first year as a full-time starter. He leads the league in assists, is in the top five in steals, and the top ten in field goal percentage. He is coming off an incredible week in which he averaged over 17 assists and 16 points per game. Halftime score. Well, we talked about the defense of Chicago and the offense of the and you'll see that they're trying to find struggled it. a little bit meanwhile there's mr. Jordan well that's the kind of alley you don't want to give Jordan because these are the kinds of things that can happen He's done Five. 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 It really is a little bit of a chess game, but then as the Sonics end down. Uh, you see, Collins is telling his team how much time is left on the clock. We'll see if it does any good. It only takes really one second to pull the trigger. McDaniel does that. Xavier McDaniel. McDaniel got off to a great start. And then Steve and I are in New York to watch Jim Paxson and the Celtics play a week from the bank. Ellis. Mr. Ellis. As they battle for the rebound, out of the pack comes Michael Jordan. Jordan ahead to Paxson on the baseline. Oakley has that rejected by McMillan. Gets it back, tries again. Wishes he hadn't. Rebound all the once in this ball game, and he's got a clear side, and he can put the ball on the floor. Good drive. He muscled his way past Sellers and has eight points. Half of them in the nice soft touch, though. Suckers is decked by McDaniel, who just keeps on keeping off and gets the turnaround McDaniel. foul line jump. Well, that started out with him looking for Seattle somebody. To Supersonics select Scott Pippen of Central Arkansas. The Chicago Bulls select Olden Polonese of the University of Virginia. Well, you try to figure out who's got the better of the deal, and both teams got what they wanted. They got a player in Polonese who can rebound and play up front. He needs a little bit more playing time. Pippen has that, had the better production in his rookie season, but if you were to say about Pippen, what could he do to really help the Chicago Bull team, and that's identify one thing that he does well since he can do so many things and just do that, and his game would probably expand. But both teams got the players that they'd like as we take a look at Pippen on the sideline. And they slapped him on draft day, and Brad Sellers will. And it wasn't Pippen. Watch out. Mr. Jordan, 7, 55. Now, they make the interchange between Chambers and Ellis again, and we'll see if Chambers or... Now, they got Chambers on a mismatch, whether he can really take advantage of Jordan this time. Now, at this point, you should clear the side for Jordan. He's got Chambers. That's what they do, and he makes a good pass for Oakley. Who will shoot, too. If it's on Lister, it's his fourth. 
and from his actions, it is. So now Bernie Bickerstaff has a decision to make, and he's made it. And the youngster we were just talking about, Olden Polonies, will check into the game. And Lister goes to the Pines. Lister averaged more than 11 points a game last year. He's averaging just five this and has not scored tonight. So things are cooking along for him to win. Well, you know, he can say sign him, but he really never has gotten into the mix. And, uh, you know, he's not a player that has great. Chambers hammers it low. Dallas is posted and a foul is called. A lot of fouls in this game. Uh, Michael Jordan is second. That's the second on Jordan. Chicago's shot a lot of free throws in this game. Seattle hasn't shot any, but they're they've been a perimeter team much of the night. Jordan is saying, "Look, you, the guy traveled. I don't care about the foul, but he traveled. Now, if he post up for that travel, twenty-five for Ellis." I wonder if any NBA referee has a wife who nags it. They get nagged all the time. <laughs> Jordan against Ellis. Eight on the shot clock. He'll shoot two. I'll tell you, it's a nightmare when you have to guard Jordan and he really wants to take it to the basket. He's got the ability to go left or right and he can go off the dribble and that time he made a good hard move. Shook Ellis and the defense collapsed. He's at the line. Jordan seeks his 15th point. You know, we talk about players being blessed, but if there was ever a guy, and you know that ad that they run in all the papers says Jordan couldn't make his high school team, this guy has all of the skills and it seems like he was born to play basketball and not only that but he appears to have his head firmly screwed on I mean he's involved in a lot of charitable work makes a ton of money on endorsements more than he makes out of basketball well, that's gonna change I don't know I mean he he might he's gonna make more as a player but he's making a ton boy this perfect town perfect situation for a sword for Boston yeah, you know, Boston has a way of doing that to their opponents, I getting know. even and keeping people away from them and uh, making it real tough to catch up with them. Jordan inside. That's Jordan there. McDaniel takes a walk. And the Bulls can grab their biggest lead of the night. He's rolling that cigar and saying, yeah, I did it to him again. <laughs> Court with 4.20 left in the third quarter. 67-59, biggest lead of the game for Chicago. Checked back in. McMillan up the floor. Well, this is a guy that's got to bring him back. Ellis has got the most hot and consistent hand. They got to work to him. 4-3 over Jordan. Good job by Michael defensively. That's it, the boy. It's McMillan, a track meet. He's got to go all the way to the hoop, and he gets a hoop this time. Nate Dave Corzine about to enter the Chicago scheme of things. Jordan for Sellers. In and out. Rebound knocked out. McMillan. Oh, great play. Makes a great play. Paxson is hurting. McMillan gets the hoop. It looks like Paxson may have jammed a finger. He has dislocated his thumb. And a 20-second timeout is called timeout. by Chicago. Yeah, it looked like John Paxson dislocated his thumb and we filed the trainer and tried to get that. Ellis tried to make that play, and you'll see a great play and presence by McMillan to tip that ball ahead, knowing that and once I get it past John Paxson, I got an easy hoop. He takes it over the top, and Paxson trying to reach for the ball got his hand in the chest right there of Nate McMillan, and that's when he came up hurting. Oh, that hurts like crazy. So hostility as well. Resume here, and again the Sonics will come back. 2:51 left. It's 67-63, and you see the ice bag. And you know that's the only time you like ice when you're in so much pain that you can't feel the cold. <laughs> Speak for yourself, baby. It's not the only time I like ice. Uh, you can see the pain that he's in. 
trainers tell him, don't worry, I, I got I got it covered. And that's small solace. You know, he said that's easy for you to say. <laughs> so the play will resume. Dale Ellis against Michael Jordan. That's a pretty good matchup. Seattle can move back to within two. The shot clock, good rebound, Polonese. Oh, better followed by Dale Ellis. Ellis is keeping them in the game. He has 27 of their points. Jordan didn't look underneath the basket. They don't. Shot clock's at five. Kenny from the half circle buries it. Three point Seller sprains an ankle. He stepped on somebody's foot. So it's four and four on five Friday night, and you take a look at Brad Sellers, but uh, you know that's kind of like a, a football player. He gets injured, but he can always go for that touchdown. What a huge win down there for Atlanta against it. Tyron Williams. Team, even in that bizarre loss than he had in some time, and they've won two straight since. Well, they did a lot of good things, but I mean, it's tough. Uh, you know, when you talk about coaches, uh, their paranoid group wouldn't sleep after something like that. Four, three. Chambers has been struggling all night, gets a big hoop, and brings the Sonics right back. Now, Sparrow, Grant, Sellers, and Paxson all hurting for Chicago, and they only have an 11 man rest. Michael Jordan. What a block by Chamber. Ahead to Dale Ellis. Jump shot, yes. Oh, he is a confident shooter. He's got 29. See what kind of play the Sonics come back with after the timeout. Ellis, of course, has been the guy with the hot hand, and they're looking inside. They're going to get a hold against Jordan. Balance on Michael Jordan. His third, 13 foul. Paxson does have a dislocated thumb. Uh, even if they let him back in, he won't be back. Uh, again, they're looking for Ellis, but they don't get him the ball where he can do so. Foul gets absolutely no satisfaction. Now a foul on Ellis. Grant against Chambers. The jumper rims it, won't go. McDaniel the rebound. Shows he can really handle the ball for a guy his size. That's the shot that Jordan has. To take, but he gets that one off the glass. He's got 22, and he's going to be the man now if Chicago's going to win the game. They lead by one with 7.55. Ellis thought about three, goes for two, and drills it. Ellis. Work against the clock again. Chambers Eight wants the to drive. He's hit, gets the hoop, and the foul. So Chambers now with 17, 13 in the second half. Grant's fourth foul. Now, you know, if you're Horace Grant, you ignore the coach at this point. He's over there yelling, Horace, force him to the middle. The coach, <laughs> I didn't know which way to take him. I took him the best way I could. Chambers converts the three-point play, and he's got 18, eight in the quarter. So it's now 84-82 Seattle. We near the halfway mark in the final period of regulation. Jordan almost lost it out of bounds. From the ball line, he's hit as he misses, shoots two. Dale Ellis got him. That's four on Ellis. And Jordan can tie the game at the foul line. Two and the Basketeers are right ahead of the twosome, but Jordan has the ability to pick up the slack very quickly. Got that free throw. He's got five in the period. Scotty Pippen up the floor. For Oakley threw it away. He's got a three on one. Jordan, two shot foul. McMillan got him, but prevented the basket by so doing. My game. Sparrow comes in for Pippen, but I'm not sure you take Pippen out for that mistake. The play was there. The pass was just a little high. Jordan has done all of his damage from the free throw line. He gets the second. He's 13 of 16 from there. Has 25. Can't get a shot away. Chambers head of the circle against Oakley. Good move. He's a strong kid, Tom Chambers. It's crazy because he won't take it to the hoop a little bit more. No play against McKee, knocked away by Ellison out of bounds. Ten on the shot clock. Jordan posts down low, but doesn't get the hoop, or he doesn't. 
He gets another shot at it with a left hand. Great move. McMillan against Jordan. A holding foul on Rory Sparrow. Rory laughing. He knows he got caught. And he's got the bad thumb and was trying to hold. So he's saying, well, if you didn't foul him, why are you holding your hand? Ellis is really one of the tougher guards to really prevent from getting the post-up position. In college, he was a forward and played a lot down low. He does a good job of holding people behind him, picks up the foul. Yes, another foul on Sparrow. Ellis is 75% free throw shooter, and that's surprising. You think he'd be better than that? He's four out of five tonight. Tonight's Polaroid picture perfect play is brought to you by Polaroid Spectra System. Hold the picture in your hand while the feeling is still in your heart. Well, Michael Jordan is a player who can put the feeling in your heart. A beautiful left hand drive inside. And that's a pretty play for any player. Michael Jordan, picture perfect. And the feeling is hard. Here's the quiet in the truck. Here's the Blues Brothers who entertained during that timeout. Rory Sparrow bangs into the table. Well, the Sonics, they want this win in the worst way. This has been a tough road trip for them. And, of course, Chicago would really ache if they dropped this one here at home. Shot clock is down to 10 once more. McDaniel against Oakley. McMillan. Ellis, four on the timer. McMillan, no, an air ball. Rebound, 340 remaining. Well, here's a guy that can get a decent shot. It's a question of whether he just wants to go on his own or not. They got a screen for him set up, and he decides to pass. Sellers, no, rebound. McMillan, three on two. Chambers, right down the middle. Good pass. Ellis, yes. Ellis. Awesome and easy two points at the other end. Chicago needs a hoop here. Jordan, no game. Sparrow got in the ball. 29 for Jordan, 11 in the quarter. Ellis has got the position. Jordan did a good job of coming around and knocking it away. When he, when he gets that, you got to get it to him real quick because Jordan is cat-like quick and can get around and slap it away as he just did. Shot McDaniel puts it down. X is going to shoot it till he gets it right. Big hoop ties it up. Six on the timer. Seller. No whistle. Wow. Loose ball. McKee out of there with it. And the Sonics can take the lead. Doug Collins is telling this team, we got to have some stops, fellas. If we don't have anything else, we got to make them shoot a tough try and get a rebound. And McDaniel, he loves the baseline, but it won't go. And Gordon, the rebound. No time out for Chicago. They know what they want to do. Well, it's the sixth play again, only this time they'll get Grant involved. Jordan splits the defense. He's got 31. Bernie Bickerstaff with play instruction. What they've got to have here is some pressure on Jordan and make him give the ball up going away from the hoop and make a pass outside. If he penetrates like he did before, they're going to get an easy two inside. Great pass down low. Oakley, no whistle. Two on one break. McDaniel takes it himself out of the chamber. Foul Jordan. They can tie it at the line. Well, uh, what he's saying is stop the break. We'll worry about the call later. And they get Tom Chambers on the free throw line. Jordan picks up the foul. That is his fourth. McDaniel probably took that ball just a little bit deeper than you'd like to have it. So he didn't have the good angle where Chambers could have probably hammered that one home and had a possibility of a three-point play. McDaniel is a 68, or rather Chambers, who's at the foul line, is an 81% foul shot. Well, Jordan's reaction. He can tie it with this one. Nine seconds left. And this is an area where Chime Chambers used to be very weak. Couldn't shoot the free throws, and particularly in a hostile situation, but he's improved and he's perfect tonight. Grant the rebound. Timeout 
Chicago, I think, called the time for a couple of reasons. Number one, they get the ball in midcourt. Number two, Grant with a rebound, not a good free throw shooter. I think they'll get it at midcourt. We'll see what the officials decide. Well, we'll get a chance to look at Bernie Bickerstaff and try to figure out what he is going to run, particularly at the defensive end. Let's listen. Doug Collins is telling his team, first, we want to get the ball inbounds. He set up the alignment that he wants, and if you can't do that, don't panic. you got plenty of time. Bickerstaff on the other end is saying, we've got one thing we can do. They'd like to figure out a way, the Bulls would, to get this inbounds pass to Michael Jordan. Seattle knows that, so let's see what happens. Right away. Gets it, foul Ellis. Fifth on Ellis. That took one second, so Ellis handled it well. Well, that's all they could do. They've got to be concerned about the clock. If the Bulls got it in, they're going to volleyball it around. The guy you'd like to foul is someone that doesn't shoot as well under pressure as Michael Jordan. Well, here's Jordan. If he makes one, it's a two-point lead. If he makes two, it's a three-point lead. If he misses them both, it's a one-point lead. I would be very surprised if he missed them both. Well, you talked him out of some. You may talk us into overtime. That was a roller, but it went in. He has 14 in the quarter, 32 in the game. <laughs> Nothing but the bottom of the net. Time out, Seattle. And they will have five. They will get the ball at midcourt, and they will have five seconds, and they have no choice but to take a three-point shot. If they go to the hoop hoping for a three-point play, Chicago will run out of the way and let them have the basket. So everybody in the building knows they got a bomb away from outside. And so Chicago will have a perimeter defense, probably nobody anywhere near the basket. You know they're going to be taking a three-point basket, and you know Chicago has to put or will feel like they should put some pressure on that. And if you foul a guy and he drills a three, you can lose the game on a four-point play. I saw it Isaiah Thomas do it to Atlanta when I was doing their games about seven years ago, and I've never forgotten it. It's a long shot, but it has happened. Well, you don't care who makes it when you turn about the numbers right there. They've got to get a shot up and down and a chance to tie. First, they got to get it in, and they just barely do. And Ellis made a good pass to McDaniel. With one second left, Chicago calls timeout. Boy, a great pass by Ellis. Everybody thought he was going to shoot it. He got it back to McDaniel, and he drilled it with one second remaining in regulation. 95 all our score, and at least another five minutes to play. Thank you, Skip. We didn't want to interrupt that dance there for you. Ah, you see what possession of the basketball could have meant to Chicago, but they didn't get it. And McDaniel hammered home the tying three-point shot for Chicago. Oh, nice play, Jordan. 4.25 left in OT for two. They didn't get any. Boy, that Jordan, you know, what a superbly conditioned athlete he has to be. Ooh, another nice play by Jordan, but it won't go down. Almost makes the tip after that. Strong rebound, Nate McMillan. Chambers fumbles, gets it back. X-Man, just a little bit inside where he hit the last one. But he said, hey, I'm in this game, too. Don't forget about me, fellas. Sellers. Grant blew the layup, blew the tip. Chicago again can take the lead as Oakley and McDaniel bang at one another. See the time remaining, 12 on the shot clock. Jordan, no foul. Jordan storms at Dan Crawford, the young official. Nine on the shot clock, and Chicago will inbound on the end line. Well, again, he's the player that's going to create something, and the defense is stacked against him. He comes with a tough hand. 35 for Jordan. 
And the Sonics call timeout with a minute 32 remaining in the overtime period. Michael Jordan has always been a player that relishes a big moment. And if you're the defense, you got to think, keep the ball out of his hands. He makes a great jumping jump shot where he's changing direction and also changing his shot against the defense of Tom Chambers. A bigger hoop the Bulls couldn't ask for, and they have a two-point advantage. They've outscored in three and a half minutes of this overtime. They've outscored them 4-2. 99-97 the score. Well, you know, when you when you have overtime games. McMillan against Sparrow. Eight on the timer. Ellis Chambers. Now, see, they want, to, they want to make sure they get a good shot, and they've used all of the clock. They got a good shot, but he missed it. Oakley the rebound. And now Oakley and Chambers begin to bang at one another. And Horace Grant, among others, acts as a peacemaker. Chambers calls for the foul. Well, you take a look at the action and what Chambers is going to take exception to are all the elbows that are flying in there just missing his chin. That could have been a KO real easy. And you know what he's telling him. Hey, Charles, I don't mind the rebound. Just watch the arm. But he shouldn't have been so close. Oh, they had Jordan break the other way, but good defense. Ellis broke back with him. Will they go for three now? Wouldn't surprise me. Three, no. Rebound Chicago. They'll have to foul, I would think. Jordan is double teamed in terrible trouble, and I see what the call is. Time out Chicago and a very big one because Jordan was trapped in no man's land. He's out there for you and try to foul him. So they're going to make a quick pass out of steel and get the ball out of Jordan's hand. Grant is a 64% foul shooter. And the foul is against Jordan, and that's the guy, of course, Chicago wants at the line. Jordan has had a good night at the foul line. He seeks his 36th point, but if he makes this one and one, it is. That'll make it a little tough for Bernie Bickerstaff to sleep tonight. A timeout is called a desperation timeout by Seattle. Well, you see the glum face of Dale Ellis, who's gone for 34 points tonight, but it looks like his team will lose. It's been a war in the Chicago Stadium tonight. Well, it's been a physical contest, and it's been a tough ball game. There are 12 seconds left. And in. they get it to Ellis against the double team. Out top, knocked away. Time waste. There's the game. Jordan, a little ice. He's got 39. Three, two, one. It's over. A devastating loss for the Sonics, a must win for Chicago. 104-97 is our final score in overtime. The Bulls win it, and we'll be back with our player of the game right after this. 97 Chicago in overtime, that's the final. Our next NBA telecast, Bob Neal, Rick Barry from Indiana on Friday night at 8.05, where the Pacers will host the Atlanta Hawks. Stay tuned to Superstation TBS for the best entertainment following tonight's game. 2000. On behalf of Steve Jones and our entire TBS crew, Skip Carey from the Chicago Stadium. Have a good evening. So long, everybody.